Brawl Talk just released, and I've got a full breakdown of everything coming into the game, including a lot more than what they just mentioned in Brawl Talk. Angelo is the newest epic brawler coming to the game. He is a mosquito that lives in the swampy love tunnel, which makes him the second brawler in Willow's trio. Now, he's a sharpshooter, meaning that he has a very long range, and he's also the second brawler in the game that can hover over water because his, you know, little mosquito wings help him, I guess. Now, he fires a single projectile with his main attack, just like most sharpshooters do, but what makes his attack unique is that it will charge up the longer you aim the attack and it deals more damage the longer you charge it. So I imagine he's basically going to be like a long ranged Hank. Now the lowest damage that we see, which appears to have been auto aimed, is 572 damage, which is a little more than a single projectile from Gale's main attack. It's it's not very much like at all. Now, unfortunately, the only shot that we actually see that is completely fully charged, the damage is actually just slightly outside of the screen. So we don't know exactly how much damage it is. But the highest damage we see, which looks to be almost fully charged, is 4004 damage, which is a little less than a fully charged bubble from Hank. Like I said, it's a long range Hank shot, right? Now, if he deals the same damage as Hank with a fully charged shot, we're looking at a tie for third place for the strongest attack in the game. Angelo hits very hard, but he can't fire rapidly like Piper could, you know? Now for his super, Angelo creates a swampy puddle that damages enemies for 1000 damage per second, which is 200 damage more than Spike's super. But we can't tell exactly how long the super lasts for, so therefore we don't know how much the total damage is going to be. Now I have to assume that the super can't be thrown, since we see the super being aimed, but no reticle appears, right? It's just, I, we don't know for sure though, we'll have to wait to see in the Angelo Olympics video, which will be a sneak peek that I'll be releasing soon. Now what's most interesting about this super is that while Angelo is standing on his poison potion or whatever, it poisons his arrows so that he will poison enemies that he hits with his attacks and that will end up dealing some extra damage over time. You know, as if getting hit by a 4,000 damage sniper shot is not bad enough. Now, Angelo has 6,000 total health, which is the same amount as Kit, Surge, Miko, Jesse, Sprout, Mr. P, and Max. And for reference, that's only more than 20 bars in the game, so he is not very tanky. Now, they only mentioned the super dealing damage to enemies and adding poison damage to his attacks, but it looks like he actually recovers 600 health every second he's inside of it, so I think it's pretty safe to assume that that is actually one of his star powers. It'll be like a little healing pad for him. Up next, we have Melody, the newest mythic brawler coming to the game. She loves to sing karaoke in Star Park, and she is the first brawler of a new trio. Apparently, she has some very serious mood swings and has been described as a rose, sometimes like the sweet little flower and sometimes like its thorns. She has a very interesting character design. Now, similar to Stu, she's actually more of a long-ranged assassin. Her attacks only deal 1,040 damage each, which is the same as a single tick from like a damage from M his main attack, right? You just get hit once. It's not a whole lot of damage. In fact, it is the second weakest attack in the game based off of just one single ammo. Third, if you count Meg outside of her mecha. However, every single time she hits an enemy, she gets a musical note that starts to revolve around her. These musical notes deal damage on contact with enemies, very similar to like Amber's dancing flames gadget, right? After a while, the notes do disappear and she can have up to three of them around her and each of them deal 2,080 damage to whatever they touch, which is as strong as one of Bell's main attack. And if you're not able to escape that close range, right? Like it's very likely you're gonna get hit multiple times. She, she could kill you. If she has three of them around you, then you're dead. Now when Melody's super is charged, she actually charges three supers basically, and she gets to dash three times, and each one of them can be individually aimed, so she gets to just dash however she wants those three different times. You can actually see how many dashes she has left on her super button, but the thing that's really interesting is that she cannot recharge her next super until you have used all three of her dashes. So unlike most brawlers who have supers that can recharge their super, she can't do that. And almost always, you are going to want to use her dashes to force the musical notes around her to hit enemies, because the super itself doesn't deal any damage at all. So so she's going to be a very, I don't, she's interesting. I'm really excited to play her. Now she has 8,200 health, which isn't quite as much as some of the bulky assassins like Fang or Buzz, but 
I feel like it's plenty considering her range. I didn't really see anything that looked like a star power, but if I had to guess, a second star power is very likely that a fourth musical note would be able to surround her. We got six new hypercharges coming to this update. First of all, we have Cordelius and he <laughs> slows whoever is in the shadow realm with him. This is insane because he's basically guaranteed to be able to hunt down his opponent or he's guaranteed to be able to run away if that's what you would prefer to do. Like, it's insane. Next is Buzz, and this allows him to continually use his super over and over and over again while his hypercharge is active. <laughs> now, my biggest concern with this is that I'm worried that he's going to be able to repeatedly stun enemies with his super as well. If that's the case, then this is probably broken. <laughs> but even if the stun doesn't keep applying, he'll basically be able to Spider-Man swing across the map, which I'm really excited to try. That sounds so fun. Next, we have El Primo and for this, it makes his super slam area a little bit bigger. At least that's what they said. It didn't look like it in Brawl Talk footage, but they said that it did. But the main pull of this is that he pulls brawlers towards him instead of pushing them away with his super. And it looks like they get knocked up into the air more than usual, which may allow him to deal damage before they actually can. This looks really strong for El Primo, honestly. Up next, we have Belle, and her super now will home in on her targets. We didn't get to really see how much it homes in in Brawl Talk, but I assume it's very much like Piper's gadget. Next is Sprout Super, and its walls will now deal damage to enemies who get too close. It looks like it's about 1,000 damage per second, which is actually a lot of damage if your opponent isn't paying attention, um, but probably not a whole lot of damage otherwise. Next is BB, and for her hypercharge, her bubblegum bubble will split into two if it hits a target. Now, based off the limited footage we saw, we don't know if the bubbles will continue to keep splitting if they hit more targets. If that's the case, it could be super crazy, like bouncing bubbles all over the place. Now to celebrate these new hypercharges, we are getting another hypercharge unleashed event. Now this hypercharge unleashed event is going to be happening in solo showdown. And on top of your hypercharge charging faster, it looks like they're going to be hyper drops that will automatically charge your super and hypercharge if you pick them up. <laughs> That's actually really cool. But even more cool is the fact that you get a free hypercharge by completing the hypercharge unleashed event, which I love getting on my free to play series. Next, we have a brand new mode. It is a solo mode, and this one is one of the most complex and interesting modes that we've had in the game for a long time. Trophy Escape is a 10-man free-for-all mode. You win trophies by killing people, and then when they die, they will drop trophies and you go and pick them up. The more trophies they have, the more they will drop. And the more trophies you have when the match ends, the more trophies you actually win, which is interesting. But there's some really interesting twists to this. Once five of the 10 players are eliminated, then portals on the map will become activated. If you'd like to leave the match, with the trophies that you have picked up, then you go and you stand on a portal. Now it takes a few moments for the portal to fully activate, but once it does, then it will take you out of the match and however many trophies you're holding, you will gain. <laughs> Just so weird. But the thing is, if you die before you can leave the portal, you will lose trophies even if you picked a lot of them up. Now there aren't any poison clouds on the map and if there are still people on the map when the timer runs out, everybody dies and they all lose trophies. <laughs> and if you are the last remaining player on the map when you either finish somebody off or they exit through the portal, you will automatically collect any trophies that are lying on the ground and leave the match with your trophies as long as the timer does not run out. This is a very interesting game mode. There are a lot of interesting, unique nuances that we haven't experienced in other game modes. I'm very interested to try it out. I'm really curious to know what you guys think about it. So let me know in the comment section below with hashtag trophy escape. Power League is being removed from the game and is being replaced with ranked. And it's it's basically Power League, but it's better. <laughs> and not just because it's called ranked. <laughs> you can now only select brawlers that are power nine or above. So no more people trolling you with their power one brawlers for whatever reason. Now from bronze through gold, the matches will be very similar to like Mega Pig. Each match will be a best of one single match. You either win or you lose. I guess you could draw, but you know, whatever. And there would not be a banning phase. You just pick the brawler that you want to play and it starts once everybody's selected. Now from diamond and up, the format is just like Power League. It'll be a best of three with a ban phase and then a snake draft format for the brawlers that you pick. And you can only play in diamond and up if you have at least 12 brawlers at power nine and above. That's a requirement just in case all of your brawlers get banned or whatever. Now the new ranks, honestly, they look really, really cool, very polished. And as you can see, it looks like you'll be given a special reward for increasing your, your rank, not just cosmetics, but you will get a mythic star drop for passing gold and 
From that point on, you'll get a legendary star drop for passing diamond, mythic, and legendary. And these star drops are going to be available every season. So you can recollect them every single time as long as you climb up through legendary every single time. Now they are going to be combining the solo and team queues. They're not splitting it anymore. So you can play however you would like, whether that's with friends or with not. And if you end up playing with randoms against a pre-made team, then the matchmaking is supposed to adjust to make things a little bit more balanced. And I don't know if this is for sure or not, but I would assume that you would also lose fewer points if you lose a match in that type of situation. Now, what I find interesting is that the ranked seasons are now going to only last for one month long, and your rank season is going to reset at the beginning of each season, and it will be reset all the way back down to bronze. But to help you reach your past rank faster, you will be given a boost for every win that you get until you reach your previous rank. This means that you will, like I said, be able to earn those star drops at the end of each rank every single season, which is actually pretty cool. Like I said, if you are skilled enough to reach legendary every season, that's three legendary star drops every single month. And those legendary star drops have the highest chance of you getting new brawlers and free hyper charges. Now, additionally, they are going to be adding a new star drop into the game called the ranked star drops. These will just be cosmetic rewards. They are going to be rewards for various tiers and ranks. So as you climb up, you'll receive various ranked star drops. And these ranked star drops will allow you to collect previous Power League cosmetics, such as pins, sprays, profile icons, and bling. And if you've already collected all the previous pins, sprays, and profile icons, then you will be given bling instead that you can then use to spend on cosmetics outside of Power League. So any skin that you want to get, that's really cool. Now, additionally, the skins from previous Power Leagues will be given color variations in the future, and those color variations will be added to ranked star drops as well. So you will be able to get those previous cosmetics, those previous skins, that's really awesome. And on top of that, each season will have a ranked skin that can appear in the ranked star drop at a higher drop rate. I said that really weird. But like for this current season, it'll actually be Loki Chester. And if you find it, you get that new skin completely for free. You no longer have to play the ranked and then earn the ability to buy the skin. You just play the ranked. And the only way you can get those new ranked skins is from these ranked star drops. It's a very interesting system. I don't know how it's going to compare to previous uh, power league rewards and stuff like that for the most hardcore or the most casuals but overall it actually sounds pretty good now another reward for playing ranked are the new cosmetic backgrounds that you can have for your battle cards we saw diamond here and then we saw four different ones for masters this is because each rank has three different variations and you get an extra upgrade every time you reach that rank in a different season so there's actually a reason for you to try and reach your previous rank every single season because that will improve your battle card and that's it's really cool additionally fame is also going to have some cool battle card cosmetics that you can have and it looks like you can actually choose between ranked backgrounds fame backgrounds or you can disable them completely and i honestly i really love that these there's this is just a new way for you to show your dedication to the game whether it's fame by showing long-term dedication to the game or ranked icons by showing how much time you're willing to put into actually getting better at the game it's done uh, pretty well so far from what i can tell now the big change that is very likely going to be a bit controversial is that ranked is now going to have modifiers with a unique twist in each ranked match. <laughs> now, ranked is supposed to be a competitive mode, so the only modifiers in ranked are going to be ones that will impact both teams equally. There's quick fire, which will automatically reload your ammo every time you hit an enemy. This could be great for brawlers like Tick, who have slow reload speeds, but are easy to hit enemies with. There's also timed detonation, which will slowly destroy the environment over time, making this a great modifier for brawlers who thrive on open maps like B. The big friend modifier will increase everyone's hit points on your team to be the same as the highest HP brawler on your team. <laughs> so you could be playing Tick, with the HP of a Frank, <laughs> which is weird. So obviously the strategy is for you to have two brawlers that are really good at dealing a ton of damage so that they can shred through enemy HP and then having one tanky brawler on your team to give your other two brawlers those big advantage. Next, we have the barbed ammo modifier, which will leave damage over time on your opponents. So like basically every brawler becomes like Crow or Byron and deal damage over time. And maybe even Crow and Byron's damage over times also deal damage over the time, which... <laughs> 
<laughs> so we're having the, the dotception going on right here, right? <laughs> the sick beats modifier will make all brawlers completely immune to all forms of crowd control. So Frank's stun won't work, Spike's slow won't work, it can, and I can only assume that like Otis's super won't work either. It's gonna be very interesting. Each season is going to have three modifiers as well as a chance of getting classic, meaning that none of the modifiers will be, will be played. It'll be just like a normal mode. And an important thing that they mentioned in Brawl Talk is that they understand that a lot of people might not like the new modifiers and how that's going to impact the new ranked mode. They're gonna give it a try for the next couple of months and their hope is that the modifiers will keep things fresh and exciting, make it more engaging and uh, give more people a reason to play, but they are completely prepared to change it if the feedback truly is bad. Now, one of the things I'm very excited about is they are going to be adding quests for playing ranked mode. And I'm so excited for this because a big reason I haven't played ranked mode for the past year or so is because I've been focusing on progression for my free to play and my pay to play accounts. But now there are star drops to be earned every single month and I'll be able to complete specific quests in ranked. So that is very hype. Just like how hypes the report bucket button is, it is now going to be working and they are going to be ready to take action if somebody continually gets reported. You can report people for playing poorly, for griefing others, or for cheating, but you can only report people 10 times a day to try and limit, you know, how much people are getting reported. So what happens when somebody gets reported? Well, every player will have a reputation meter. And if your meter goes down too much, you get the red card and you are suspended for playing ranked mode, probably for that rest of that season. Now, all you have to do to get your reputation meter back up is to just play like a decent human being and not be an idiot. This is gonna be very interesting and I'm curious to see if it'll actually have a positive impact on players. We'll have to see. Now we have all of the skins coming into the game. I'm going to very clearly specify what their costs are if we know what their costs are. And I will theorize or guess on the skins that we don't know the specific costs for. Let's start off with the Sands of Time skins that are going to be for the Marches season. First up, we have Shelly Dancer. This is going to be a Brawl Pass skin. And then the Iris and Dahlia skin color variations will be available if you purchase the Brawl Pass Plus. No matter which Brawl Pass you buy though, I'd really appreciate you using code Kairos in the Brawl Stars shop. By putting it in before you buy them, that'll give me a small kickback of the purchase and support the development of future videos on this channel. Next is Dynasty Mike, and I'm guessing this is gonna be 149 gems. After all, he throws gems at enemies and gems are pricey. <laughs> Thief Edgar, oh, this skin is so cool. I'm guessing another 149 gems, but I will be doing a giveaway for Thief Edgar on my Discord server. So follow me there for a chance to get it for free. The link is in the description below. Next, we have Sir Genie. <laughs> That's right. I'm guessing 79 or 149 gems. Then is Desert Scorpion Chuck. This is a 299 gem skin. It is a legendary. This is a seriously cool looking skin and does come with an epic kill animation. Next, we have some Line Friends skins. Fangirl Coney skin is for Colette. This is probably going to cost 79 or 149 gems. Then there's Rocket Brown for Brock. I'm guessing 79 gems. Then there's Balloon Sally skin for Gus, and I'm guessing also 79 gems. Then we have the Ragnarok Norse mythology season in April. First off, we have Sif Melody. She is a 29 gem skin. Then we have Fenrir Buzz, and this skin is going to be the Brawl Pass skin. Then you have the Brawl Pass Plus skin variations of Elder Fenrir Buzz, which is fire themed, and Skuga Fenrir, which is shadow themed. Very cool. Next, we have Loki Chester. This skin is going to be available from ranked star drops at a higher drop rate as well during its season. Then there's Odin Cordelius. This one is so cool. I could see this one being 149 gems or 199 gems if I had to guess. There's also Scotty Jesse. She summons a little fox turret. So cute. I'm also guessing probably 199 gems, maybe 149. Then there's Thor BB, another super cool one that will cost 299 gems and will come with everything, including this super cool kill animation. We also have two new mecha skins, both of them costing 299 gems like the others. First up is Mecha Leon, which also has two color variations. There's Shadow Mecha Leon and Radiant Mecha Leon, which is personally my favorite. Although I do like the green of the regular Mecha Leon, it's very cool. Then we have Mecha Colt, which was a Supercell make winner. And it also comes with the Paragon Mecha Colt skin color variation and the Renegade Mecha Colt skin color variation, which will be available for purchase after you buy the base model. Then we have some random skins, starting with Elf Angelo, uh, 29 gems. Uh, this is interesting. It's just Angelo, 
low, but he's an elf. Then we have Pitcher Fang. Now we don't know the cost of how much this will be, but I'm guessing 79 gems and it does come with a skin color variation. Then there's Squeaky Note. It's, he, he's, a, he's a sticky note, but he's squeaky. <laughs> it will cost 29 gems. Um, and then we have Poop Spike. Yeah, they put poop in the game, seriously. But <laughs> if you weren't convinced already, there's also Primo Shark Doo Doo. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And that is everything we know coming in this update. I will be breaking it down even further in update sneak peeks with answers to all of your questions. So if you do have questions about this update, let me know in the comment section below and add hashtag question to your comment so I'm more likely to be able to see it and answer it. Subscribe for future sneak peeks. We'll see you in the next video.